Hello, welcome back to Mina's Daily Dose. My name is Mina and thank you for joining me today. If you are new to my channel, hello. Thank you for clicking on this video. And if you are already part of the fam, hello. How are you? Thank you for your continued support. Today, I just wanted to come to you guys to talk a little bit about this hair. So if you follow me on my Instagram, you know that I am a brand ambassador for one of my friend's hairlines and it's called Stay Fancy Hair Shop. If you don't follow me on my Instagram, I would definitely put the name somewhere up here on the screen so that you can go ahead and follow your girl. Okay, all right. It has been made for about, I would say, a week or so. I did film me making the wig, and in that video, I also talk a little bit more about the hair. I show you the hair bundled, and I also show you all my process of how I construct my wigs. This is just me coming back to you guys after about a week to just talk about my experience with the hair and to give you guys my overall thoughts on the hair and just to let you guys know what I do, how I maintain it, and all of that good stuff. In the video where I actually show you all how I constructed the wig, I did go over the bundles and the length, but I'll go ahead and go over it again. I have one 20 inch two 18 inches and then the closure is like a five by four and it is 16 inches so i did cut the wig to frame my face a little bit more and i may cut it even more but i definitely love the length of the wig and on my instagram i posted a picture of the person who is my inspo and if you could guess who my hair inspo is then please leave the name down in the comment section below. I use majority of the bundles because I wanted my hair to be super duper thick and I wanted to have a lot of volume. So I did use majority of the bundles. The texture of the hair is a deep wave mink hair, meaning that it is very high quality and it's very smooth in texture and it just feels very very nice and luxurious so i'm gonna go ahead and insert some clips here of me going through the bundles the company and also showing you guys how i make my wig then i'll come back i'll give you guys my thoughts on the hair I'll let you guys know how you can get your own bundles i want to be showing you guys how i make my wig not in full detail but just like speeding through it and you know just showing you what i do there are a million videos on youtube that can show you how to make a wig so i don't do anything spectacular or you know just so out of bounds where you can't find how to do it but i will be showing you guys a little bit of how i make my wigs and then i'll also be coming back to review the hair that i'm actually using i'm super duper stoked to test out the hair and be able to make a wig because because your girl needs some you know something for this okay I'm getting tired of it it's winter you know so I want to put my hair up protect it and let it grow okay so I first want to go over the hair I am an ambassador for is stay fancy hair boutique thing that I liked about my hair when I received it is that not only did it come in this but she also put it in a separate you know um, envelope to mail it in you know sometimes they just get one envelope and they put it in there and send it to you so I like that there's actually a bag that protects the hair and then she put it in another bag to mail it so I really like that what I received was I got a closure here and the one thing I like about the closure is that it has baby hairs already so as you can see here there are baby hairs already on there, which I really like. And then it's a pretty nice size closure. I'll say this is about a four by five inch closure here. A nice deep wave texture. I did want some length, so I got two 18 inch bundles and then I got a 20 inch bundle. And also the closure is a 16 inch. I have one 18 inch that I've already opened already. So I won't be showing that one. But this is the 18 inch right here. And then this is the 20 inch. Your bundles are going to come, you know, nicely wrapped and tight is not going to come to you loose in the package so the wefts are really nicely sewed i'm 
gonna go ahead and start making my wig and yeah before i actually get started on the wig i want to kind of go over what i use so i am using a wig making mannequin head now this has a clamp to it so i have this clamped onto something but it's clampable and it rotates as well i don't like the rotation too much because i like for my head to stay kind of stable but it is what it is i got it off of amazon if i do find my order information i'll definitely link it below but if you go on amazon and just type in wig making mannequin head or styrofoam cloth wig making mannequin head you will definitely see it super easy this is cloth okay so i'm going to put a plastic bag over the head now the one reason why i do that is because i use glue for my tracks and that's just easy for me to do just to use the glue so i'll use glue for the tracks and then i'll sew down my closure but this is just easy for me and this is just how i like to do it sometimes i've, I've sewn wigs before and it just takes way too long i'm going to use a pin here to just position the plastic bag in place once i have the bag kind of positioned in place i'm then going to go ahead and put the wave cap on i use a wave cap for my wigs because it already has an elastic band around it it's going to fit your head very well and it's going to stay in place wherever the tag is that is the back and so i'm just going to line up the back with the mannequin head the, the bag is slippery what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the pin one of the pins from out of the bag and I'm going to place the wig cap on the front of the mannequin head. This is the front of the wig. And I'm going to put the pin here. This is going to help the cap stay in place as I pull it down over the mannequin head. So I'm just going to pull it down over the mannequin head, which is super easy. Now that I have the wig cap on, okay, I'm going to take the other pin and I'm going to pin down the back of the wig to make sure that the wig cap stays in place. We have everything on there now, like I like it. And I'm just going to stretch the cap out a little bit more. I wanna make sure that there aren't any wrinkles in the cap. So I'm just doing that by pulling the front of the cap down a little bit more, okay? So this is the front cap. As you see, it's very smooth. There aren't any wrinkles. Or anything like that i'm going to be using this brand and you can buy this out of any beauty supply hair store um, they should have it so first i'm going to measure out my tracks and i'm going to start with the 20 inch when i make my wigs i have to make sure that i have a really nice base of tracks right along in this area because that's where my closure is going to sit so i want to make sure that i line my tracks right here so that when i sew down my closure it'll have something really nice to grip onto just to show you where the closure will sit the further along i go i'll measure out everything and make sure that everything's matching up well but i first want to go ahead and get you know my tracks laid down on the wig cap the seams right here it's kind of what I use as a guideline because these seams are really really thick so I want to make sure I can utilize those seams to benefit me when I make my wigs so I'm going to measure from seam to seam and I'm going to place this right outside the seam because as I mentioned my closure is about a half an inch wider than the front two seams of the wig cap so I'm going to start my tracks about right here okay so that I can make sure that my closure will be able to be sewn down okay so I'm going to start my tracks at about a half an inch outside of that first seam so from that half an inch from that first seam I'm going to measure that all the way around the wig And I'm just going to get my shears here and I'm going to cut 
where I measured it. And did you see how hard that was to cut? Super hard. So I'll just kind of zoom in so you guys can see the thickness of the weft. Pretty thick, okay? So I have my first piece of hair already measured out. Going to take my glue, if you're a beginner out there, I showed you like the weft, okay? So right here, that rigid area where the hair is actually sewn all together, you're going to put glue right there, okay? And you're gonna do that for the entire track. Key is you wanna make sure you don't get it on the weave itself. And if you do, hey, whatever, but try your hardest not to. Done putting the glue on the track, now I'm going to go ahead and glue it on. Remember that I'm starting a half inch out from the seam that's in the front because that's where my closure measured out at. And one tip is before you actually put your weave onto the wig cap, you wanna make sure that your glue has dried just a little bit because you want it to stay, you want it to be a little bit tacky. If you don't let it dry a little bit, then it is going to slide. So when it's tacky, you can just guide the hair around and it'll actually stick. But if it's not tacky, then it's just going to be sliding off as you're going. So, and I'm just twisting the wig head at this point. And I actually could have cut it a little bit longer, but that's fine. When I do my next piece, I'll just start it here and then come over, so no problem. Another little trick that I like to do after you get something hot to make sure that the glue dries completely. So right here, I just have a regular one inch barrel curling iron. You can use a wand, um, curling wand. You can use a blow dryer. I've used a blow dryer before and it works well, but I just wanted something quick. I had this up on 400 degrees. And so I'm just pressing this over the track. And I'm pushing down a little bit. Okay. The one place you wanna make sure you do this at really well is the beginning of the placement. So right here is where I began this track. This is one place you wanna make sure you press down well. You don't want the beginning of the track to be coming off, so right here. Now I'm going to repeat that process until I get to where my closure needs to be. And when it comes to how far apart to place your tracks, that all depends on how thick you want your hair to be. So I like to start off with maybe a half an inch um, apart, and then if I feel like I need to go back in and add more hair, if I do, then I'll go back in and add more hair. So the reason why I like to start my tracks a little bit further apart is because let's say I have three bundles, great. But I know that with three bundles, I can get at least to where I need my closure to be. So at least if push come to shove, I'll have a full completed unit. It may not be as thick as I'd like, but at least I have a full completed unit. But if I start gluing my tracks close together because I want to achieve a thicker look and then I end up not having enough hair, then you don't have a complete unit, okay? Then you would have to go back and purchase more hair. Seam right here is where I'm going to place my next track. And also, another tip for doing wigs, it's never a good idea to have a lot of hair bunched up in the back because hair in the back usually tangles easier. So if you do want fullness, it's better to put your fullness in the crown of your head on the sides. And me personally, I do not like my wigs to get tangled in the back. It's just too much. So as I mentioned this track, I'm gonna have to do it a little bit longer because my first track didn't come all the way to the other side where I wanted it to. So this is just going to, you know, fill in, fill in that gap. And that's perfectly fine. I'll go ahead and put the glue onto my track and then I'll repeat the same process.
was filming with my actual light. Hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial on how I do my own wigs and I really hope it helped you guys learn the craft of making my own wigs to save me time and to save me money as well. Also to let you know I have not washed this hair yet. One reason why I don't like to wash my hair so quickly is because as you see in the video I do cut the wefts therefore the wefts are going to be exposed a little bit so there may be a little bit of shedding. I like for my wigs to just settle into themselves before I wash them and I also like to see how they wear first without them being washed because that lets me know what the hair is going to need. And one thing I noticed is that this hair needs a lot of moisture. I think that it's um, really important to make sure that you treat your weaves just like you treat your natural hair. It needs to be moisturized. So I've tried a couple of oils on this hair while I've had it. So take in mind, I have not washed it, but I do maintain it at night. Therefore, I am aware of how it soaks up moisture. And I also have an ability to use different oils on the hair. This is just, you know, this is just, you know, the hair, you know, without it really being maintained. So all you have to do is go to Stay Fan Shop. I'll put the link up here and I'll also add it in the description bar below. All you have to do is go there, shop, and don't forget to enter MENA10 so that you can get 10% off.